So we have Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 12, and in this chapter we got the battle between Boruto versus Hidari, as well as with Sarada and Konohamaru chipping in. And I'm gonna be real with you, this chapter was an absolute banger. These past few chapters in 2 Blue Vortex have been moving very quickly, with the battles amongst the Konoha Ninja versus the Shinju, such as with Hidari and Jira invading the village. At the end of last chapter, Boruto saved Himawari and Sarada from being killed from the likes of Jira and Hidari. At the beginning of this chapter, we see Boruto immediately fight Hidari right away. So let's just start from the top of this chapter where in the first page Boruto is immediately confronted by Hidari after saving Sarada and Himawari and teleporting them inside of the village. Boruto tells Konohamaru to watch over Himawari who was unconscious after using her nine tails chakra for the first time. Hidari immediately goes for the swing trying to take Boruto's head off however Boruto immediately blocks that punch by using a part of his katana and then using wind style breakthrough to push Hidari away. And I have to say, Boruto's fighting style has been absolutely fun to read, man. It has been so fun to watch just seeing him utilize ninjutsu and not actually just rely on the karma like he has in the past when it comes to fighting these crazy powerhouses. Anyways, Hidari temporarily escapes by using his claw marks and then we jump to where Kawaki and Delta are at. Kawaki notes that Boruto has been flashing around the village using space-time ninjutsu, aka the Flying Thunder God Jutsu, and he does note that Jura hasn't really made a move. Now, we do know that in the last chapter, both characters were heading toward Jura since Himawari was there. However, now that Himawari was saved by Boruto, they have finally seen Jura in their vicinity. However, they haven't confronted him just yet because obviously they know that they do not have the power level to fight this character. However, they notice that Jura really isn't doing anything and with him just standing there just take note of that because at the end of the chapter he does something absolutely insane that nobody really anticipated anyways we jump back to where boruto is where konohamaru questions boruto what exactly he is plotting let's not forget just a reminder here boruto is still viewed as a traitor of konoha due to the omnipotence event even though there are some characters that understand that boruto isn't the innocent here thanks to sarada and shikamaru for example your ordinary ninja or the people that were affected by the omnipotence jutsu like konohamaru is immediately on guard after seeing boruto for the first time in three years hence why konohamaru has some hostility toward Boruto once he does see him. Sarada and Sumire then inform Boruto about Hidari's abilities and what he can possibly do on how truly strong he is in this battle. Sumire explains that Hidari is targeting Sarada and even though there are other ninja around like Konohamaru, Hidari is willing to kill Sarada right away even if there is other people around her due to the goal that he has of devouring her. Boruto explains to the crew that they have to take down Sasuke even though it isn't Sasuke after all. Thanks to Hidari using Sasuke as a source of chakra in order for him to use his abilities, the only way to stop this is for the crew to take down Hidari altogether. And Konohamaru is still reluctant about this because of course he still views Boruto as a traitor and he tries to question Boruto about what exactly is going on with his current situation, however Boruto immediately tells him to pipe down. Which is really funny because Boruto really isn't someone to tell people to shut up, he's a very kind character after all obviously with this current battle ongoing they have to take down hidari or else all of them will die and all of a sudden the sensory ninja do sense something coming from the claw marks and this is where more of the claw grimes appear out of nowhere where boruto comes to take them down they also do attack sarada right away where sarada tries to kick them away however this is where hidari finally comes back in using the claw mark ability since all of them are connected to each other hidari can just teleport amongst each other meaning that once he does come back into the battlefield, he does grab Sarada by the leg and then immediately pulls her out. Boruto then immediately follows up by using Flying Raijin Jutsu to teleport behind the Claw Grime and uses Rasengan to strike down Hidari. And funnily enough, he actually does get the attack off right away. Usually when Boruto or Naruto for example uses the Rasengan, sometimes they aren't able to connect. However, with Boruto being able to speed blitz behind Hidari without him anticipating it, he is able to get the jump on him, destroying his entire back out. However, Hidari then escapes before Boruto or Sarada can follow up from the attack by using the claw grimes and escaping to the original dimension where all of the shinjus were formed. He then uses the tree roots of the god tree in order to regenerate his back since it got destroyed from Boruto's Rasengan and he immediately comes back into the battlefield right after. 
He then activates more of his claw mark jutsu by implementing more claw marks surrounding the likes of Boruto and Saruto overwhelming them with numbers. Since he can just teleport amongst each other, they are at his mercy. However, Saruto tries to tell Boruto to escape into the sky since he can't fly after all. However, Boruto realizes that he can't do that since he doesn't want to go up. Instead, he says that he's going to use the Rasengan Uzuhiko at maximum power this time in order to kill him in one blow. We've already seen Boruto use it before on code, however, when Boruto used it on code compared to how he uses it in this chapter, he seems to go easy on him, right? Because his original goal when he was fighting Kona initially was to find the Shinjus and take them out, since this was his original fear when he first fought Code right away. However, now that he's fighting these Shinjus and that they have evolved into something that he hasn't really imagined before, he understands that he has to kill them right away, or else the village will be destroyed and potentially the entire world. Boruto explains that he can use the energy of the centrifugal force accompanying a planet's rotation and orbit, basically the planet's chakra. And by using its orbit, this is where he was able to create the Rasengan Uzuhiko. And due to the planet being able to spin 24-7 at a non-stop rate, Boruto essentially reveals that he can use the Rasengan Uzuhiko at maximum power at a limitless rate, meaning that there is no limit to what the Uzuhiko can actually do when he actually utilizes this jutsu at full power. And this is why he tells Sarada that he can't just go into the sky, because in order to use the Rasengan Uzehiko at maximum output, he will need to have both of his feet on the ground, taking in the planetary chakra. This is how he will be able to gather as much chakra as possible in order to kill Hidari in one single blow. However, he's gonna need to gather a lot of chakra, meaning that Sarada and Konohamaru will have to buy Boruto as much time as possible in order for him to load up the jutsu for him to use it on Hidari. And I have to say, I am really impressed with Konohamaru and Sarada in this chapter because they were actually able to hold off Hidari temporarily until Boruto was able to utilize this jutsu. I'm gonna be honest honest with you, I did not expect either characters to do anything useful in this battle simply because if we're being real here, Hidari is just so much more stronger than the likes of Sarada and Konohamaru considering that in the previous chapter, he took out both of them pretty damn easily. So with that being said, with Konohamaru utilizing the Rasen Barrier, a jutsu that he developed that wasn't passed down by anybody but a jutsu that he learned on his own to stop Hidari Sudori from hurting Boruto while he was loading up that jutsu, and as well as Hidari grabbing Sarada, incapacitating her temporarily because he was trying to devour her, and then Sarada using the Chidori stream in order to protect herself by cloaking her entire body with lightning chakra in order to shock Hidari, man that was super impressive to me considering that these characters know that they are outmatched compared to Jura and Hidari, and even though Boruto is the only viable character that can fight both of these guys, it is very impressive that they are actually able to hold their own. I really wanted to see more of this considering that in Boruto Part 1, a lot of these characters were kind of pushed to the side, even characters like Mitsuki and Sarada. Obviously, they did get some shine in the anime and some parts of the manga, like in the Boro fight, but ultimately compared to the likes of Boruto and Kawaki, if you weren't Otsutsuki or Naruto and Sasuke, you were essentially useless when it comes to fighting these enemies. However, now that Naruto and Sasuke aren't here, Boruto can't be the only one carrying this burden when it comes to protecting the Leaf Village. You need ca other characters like Sarada, Konohamaru, we've already seen Mitsuki try to battle Boruto before, as well as Team 10 trying to give their best effort when it comes to fighting the Shinju. I'm really happy that Kishimoto is utilizing these side characters for once and not just using them for a couple of chapters but more or less actually directly impacting the main characters because after all, these are support characters when it comes to both Boruto and Kawaki. If they aren't there, Boruto would die in this scenario of course. That being said, after Sarada and Konohamaru get their heads off, in order to protect Boruto, Sarada throws Hidari into the air after dragging him out of the claw marks where Boruto unleashes the Rasengan Uzehiko. However, the one thing I do want to note is that Boruto didn't use the Rasengan Uzehiko at full power. Yes, he did mention that he was loading up chakra in order to utilize the jutsu from the planet. However, when Sarada throws Hidari up into the air, Sarada asked Boruto if his jutsu was ready, and Boruto straight up says no, I'm not ready. However, he still does it anyways, and we see the overall power of it, where it completely obliterates Hidari into two pieces, destroying his entire bottom half. Now this is crazy considering that this jutsu is so strong that it can essentially one-shot a shinju of this caliber, and even though it didn't really kill him all the way in the end, 
The fact that Boruto didn't use it at 100% when it comes to fighting a character of this caliber is super impressive man. This just shows you that you don't really need the karma in order to fight these top tiers. Obviously Boruto is an Otsutsuki so he's gonna have that advantage. However, all of these abilities that he has learned have been just ninjutsu and just him training with the likes of Sasuke and Kashinkoji. All without utilizing any Otsutsuki abilities. Now that is impressive to me. Of course Boruto has been him since chapter 1 of TBV but he continues to be that guy with him absolutely annihilating Hidari. Hidari's top half then falls from the sky trying to fall into the claw marks in order to escape. However, these claw marks are then shrinked instantly and this is where we see Kawaki go in for the kill. He holds Hidari down and blasts him with the chakra beam killing him instantly and even though Hidari is now killed by Kawaki, we then see something form out of the thin air and it looks like a chakra fruit. It looks like a fruit with horns around it and there's a renegon in the middle. Obviously this indicates that this comes from Hidari after him dying. Boruto grabs it out of mid air and tells Kashinkoji if this is the thing that he is looking for. Kashinkoji then confirms it through the toad where they are communicating with each other where he even says he's seen something like this before where this chakra fruit like thing is called a thorn soul bulb. It's funny that Kashinkoji mentions this because even though we did get a name to whatever this bulb is, Koji mentions that he's seen something like this before, which is really interesting considering that it looks like he is studying more about the Otsutsuki. We haven't seen him since he last went away in part 1 after he tried to battle Ishiki back in board to chapter 48 and we haven't really seen him since. While we've seen a few panels of him in TBV so far, every time he's trying to communicate with Boruto since we know that the two of them are collaborating in order to take down the Shinjus, we really don't know Koji's end motive. Obviously he wants to protect the planet like with Boruto since they are working together, however the fact that he knows something about this just should tell you that he probably has some more experience when it comes to the Tentails and the Otsutsuki as well. Or maybe this could be information that he has already known thanks to his previous affiliation with the Kata organization since he was working with Jigen who was Ishiki after all and they were trying to find a perfect vessel in Kawaki, I wouldn't be surprised if Koji was able to pick up some things while being around Jigen's presence. Anyways, Kawaki tries to ask Boruto what exactly he is holding and how does he know about this information. Since Boruto understands that this is the key in order to freeing somebody like Sasuke who was devoured by the Shinju. But before Boruto can really do anything, Boruto gets sniped across the battlefield by Jiro. This comes out of nowhere where despite him trying to talk to Kawaki, he gets completely hit off guard where the beam goes right through his body, making him fall to the ground and blood coming out of his mouth. And this is where Kawaki tries to inform Delta on what exactly is going on, since the only person that we could know that have done this is Jura. However, once we get back to Jura, as mentioned before earlier in this chapter review, he's just standing there like a badass. However, we find out that he's the one essentially sniping people across the entirety of Konoha. Now this is wild because if you don't remember, they are outside of the village right now. They are far away from the village, so he is literally quick scoping these motherfuckers out of nowhere. And it's kind of insane because this is the last thing I really anticipated. If anything, I thought that Kawaki and Delta would have fought Jura first coming into this chapter. However, Jura was watching the entire fight this whole time meaning that he was able to get more information, especially when it comes to Boruto and Kawaki's character. And this is where Sawada realizes that this bulb will allow Sasuke to be freed, since she does know that Sasuke was devoured by the Shinju. She tries to reach for it, but once again, Jira quickscopes her, making her fall to the ground. Yo, get this man in face, am I right? Anyways, the bulb suddenly levitates and immediately flies to where Jura is at. Jura then grabs it by the hand and says that Boruto shouldn't know about something like that. And the fact that he knows about these bulbs shows that he is a lot more dangerous than he'd ever imagined. And this is where Jura at the last page of chapter 12 makes a declaration that Boruto should be killed. Because he has this information and understands more about the Shinju, he is a threat to what Jiro wants to accomplish. And when it comes to Kawaki, he makes the declaration as well that he is Otsutsuki fodder, meaning that he can be killed off at any time, showing you the power and knowledge discrepancy between the karma. 
brothers. I gotta say, Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 12 was a complete banger, man. I gotta say, I absolutely love this chapter from top to bottom. From Boruto utilizing the Rasengan Uzehiko, to Sarada and Konohamaru working together and actually providing some use in order to protect Boruto to allow him to utilize that jutsu. And then of course with Kawaki for once actually taking a little W by stopping Hidari from escaping and delivering the killing blow. I think every character that has been utilized in this chapter all took a W. I know we all have been clowning Kawaki since the start of 2 Blue Vortex, however, I got some praise from my boy because, at least for once, Kawaki isn't trying to take Boruto's head off. Obviously, that is his end goal. However, this is the first time I've seen Kawaki try to prioritize the village over his own goals that he wants to accomplish. Because to be honest with you, ever since the first chapter, Kawaki has been so headstrong on trying to take down Boruto. When Code first came to the village trying to find Boruto, Kawaki tried to escape Boruto at first sight, which allowed Code to escape. And then when the Shinju came into the village a couple chapters ago, Kawaki tried to attack Boruto again, even though the village was at risk of being destroyed by Jura and Hidari. So I gotta say, I'm really satisfied with all the characters that have been utilized. Of course, I would love to see more characters in the upcoming chapters, but of course, it is a monthly manga, and we're just gonna have to let the story cook so far. But this chapter was a banger, man. I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen in the future, because... This really shows you that even Boruto has his own limitations. We already know this with Momoshiki. However, Jura has him rendered on the ground, right? He got sniped in the body, and even though he did miss his vitals, meaning that Boruto is still alive, he is seriously hurt, man. Jura is using those bijou bombs as a sniper rifle, and if he's able to take these characters out like that, that means the village is at risk of just being destroyed, especially if Boruto isn't able to get up. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section below. How do you feel about this chapter? What would you rate it out of 10? What was your favorite part of this chapter? So if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell as well, and have a good day. Peace.